We're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to Choosing the Best Undergraduate College for Pre-Meds. This presentation was made by the Solomon Admissions Medical School Consulting Team. So the Solomon Admissions Medical School Consulting Team consists of allopathic medical school admissions officers from some of the best allopathic medical schools in the United States. This includes former admissions officers at medical schools at Stanford, Washington University in St. Louis, Harvard Medical School, UC Irvine School of Medicine, the University of Michigan Medical School, the University of Washington School of Medicine, and the University of Chicago, as well as many other medical schools as well. So why care? The average acceptance rate at allopathic or MD medical schools is 3% to 4%. So for those of you who are not familiar, most medical pre-medical applicants are shooting for allopathic or MD medical schools, which have an acceptance rate of 3% to 4%. There are also osteopathic or DO medical schools that have a higher acceptance rate. But for the most part, most applicants we work with shoot for allopathic MD medical schools. Over 50% of medical school applicants get rejected by all medical schools. So over every year when students apply to medical school, over half of them get into zero medical schools. Consideration number one, how does choice of undergraduate college affect my AMCAS GPA? The average GPA of admitted allopathic or MD medical school applicants is between a 3.7 and a 3.8. Required pre-med courses, chemistry, organic chemistry, biology, physics, are typically curved to a B minus average. So a B minus would be a 2.67 out of a 4.0 at most universities. So number one, the median grade given out in your required pre-med science courses will be a B minus or a 2.67 out of a 4.0. Keep in mind that the average admitted GPA for most students who get into med school is between a 3.7 and a 3.8. Number two, often the more prestigious the college you attend, the lower your AMCAS science GPA will be since you are competing in a curved class against very, very smart students, unless the college has extreme grade inflation. Number three, attending the highest ranked undergraduate college you get into may not necessarily be the best strategy for maximizing your chance of admission into medical school. And we see this a lot because a lot of the students, we do, we do elite college admissions, and we see that a lot of students who do elite, uh, that we work with who get into great colleges, often the ones who get into the highest ranked school they get into, such as the students who get into MIT, where there's a lot of grade deflation, end up with not so great GPAs when they graduate and when they come back to us to apply to medical school, it's harder for them to get into medical school because they have low GPA. And number four, a key point, you want to attend the best college where you can get the highest GPA. So it's not necessarily, you know, I mean, if you want to be a doctor, they care a lot more about where you went to medical school than, than, than they care about where you went to undergrad. And so when you're choosing undergraduate colleges, as a high school student, you want to pick this college that's the highest rank that you can also do the best at. Here is a list of the average GPA of college graduates at different top colleges. And I've bolded the colleges that have a 3.4 average or above. So these, this is a GPA of students who are 22 or 23 years old who graduated from Amherst, Brown, Columbia, Dartmouth. And so the places in bold are places that have a lot of great inflation where students graduate with really high GPAs. So I'll give you a couple examples. So at Brown, the average Brown student graduates with a 3.61 GPA, which is incredibly high. Uh, Brown has extreme great inflation. And so when you apply to medical school and you went to undergrad at Brown, a lot of most of the students who, who apply have great GPAs. Um, an example of another, another school that, that gives out really high grades is Duke. Uh, the average Duke student graduates with a 3.44 GPA. The average MIT student you'll see graduates, graduates with a 3.26 GPA, which is very low. The average Princeton student also graduates with a 3.28 GPA, which is very, very low for, for a school like Princeton. Princeton has extreme grade de deflation. The average Stanford gra student graduates with a 3.55 GPA, which is incredibly high. 
and the average Yale student graduates with a 3.51 GPA, which is also incredibly high. Here are a list of schools that are very friendly to pre-meds. They include Brown University, Duke, Rice University in Houston, Stanford, and Yale. Here are a list of schools that are not as pre-med friendly, uh, and these places generally are associated with either grade deflation or extremely, extremely high competition in the pre-med classes. Cornell, Harvard is known to have a very rigorous pre-med program. MIT has a lot of grade deflation. Princeton has pretty extreme grade deflation, and UC Berkeley also has very, very low grade uh, grades. There's a lot of grade deflation at Berkeley. So question, do medical schools adjust your GPA for the difficulty and or grade deflation at a college like MIT or Princeton? So for the most part, no. You are expected to do well once you get admitted to a great undergraduate school. So it's, you know, a lot of students think that because they get into Harvard or Princeton, that they'll automatically get into medical school. That's not the case. Uh, you still have to do well once you're at Harvard or Princeton. Uh, at the edges, they may give you leeway. So they may take a biology major from Princeton with a 3.6 GPA over a biology major from UC San Diego with a 3.7 GPA. So does that mean that I should get, so does that mean that I should attend the easiest undergraduate college I get into? The answer is no. So there's less room for error at a lower ranked college. So once your GPA drops below the 3.7 or 3.8 threshold at a lower ranked college, you are most likely going to be in trouble for getting into an allopathic med school, whereas at a top 20 school, there's more leeway for error. So, you know, at the 3738 range, if you have a 3738 at a Dartmouth or a Columbia, you're, you're still going to get into med school most likely. But if you have a 3738 at Purdue or, or at, um, you know, at, at a college that's maybe not in the top 50, you're going to have a much harder time getting into med school. You should attend the best undergraduate college you can get into that you can perform the best at both academically and extracurricularly. And I, I, I can't stress that enough. I mean, some students, they automatically go to the, go to the highest ranked school they get into. And if you want to be a doctor, that can be a very da dangerous decision depending on what that highest ranked school is. You know, for instance, if that highest ranked school is MIT, we recommend that most students we work with who get into MIT, who want to be doctors, we recommend that they, they actually don't go to MIT just because it's going to hurt their chances for getting into medical school. Here is the top undergraduate placement per capita at the top medical residency programs. And so this is a study that looked at undergraduate students from different undergraduate colleges and it calculated what percentage of them ended up at top residency programs like in radiology or plastic surgery or neurosurgery. And so per capita just simply means that it, it, the, 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 the ranking is adjusted for the size of the graduating class. For instance, at Rice University, which is ranked number six, the graduating class is about 900 people, whereas at a place like Stanford, their graduating class is much bigger. It's 1,700 people. So a couple surprises here. You know, um, Duke is number three, which is incredibly high. Duke has a phenomenal pre-medical advising program. Brown is not surprising. You know, Brown gives out the highest grades of any Ivy League school, and so they're number four. And so just keep in mind that when you're looking at this ranking, it, it closely corresponds to the amount of grade inflation at that particular school. Stanford, for instance, and Yale ranked five and two, have extreme grade inflation. The average Stanford and Yale student graduates with over three five GPA, so it's not surprising that graduates at Stanford and Yale go on to good medical schools and get into top residency programs. Rice at number six is very high. Johns Hopkins has a phenomenal biomedical engineering program, which a lot of pre-meds major in, and they place really well at the top residency programs. Schools that are surprisingly low on the list are Princeton at number 10, and once again, it's number 10 because Princeton has extreme grade inflation. So a lot of students who graduate from Princeton have a, have a slightly harder time than students who graduate from Harvard, Yale, or Stanford at, at getting into the top med schools. MIT is very low at number 12, and, you know, that's to be expected because MIT gives out really low grades. Consideration number two, which undergraduate colleges offer the best pre-med extracurricular opportunities? So let's talk about pre-med extracurricular activities. They can basically be broken up into three different arenas. So the first arena is research in medicine or the sciences. 
medical schools really look for students who do undergraduate, especially the top med schools, look for students who do undergraduate research in medicine at a medical school or in the sciences at a school that has great research opportunities for, for undergraduates who want to do undergraduate research in the sciences. So it, it always helps to attend a college that has a medical school associated with it or a strong science research program. And so from this point of view, in a lot of cases, you know, students who attend small liberal arts colleges are at a disadvantage because small liberal arts colleges will not have a medical school associated with that college. Number two, clinical, cl clinical experience shadowing physicians. So once again, medical schools look for, look for how much clinical exposure and experience you have, so it obviously helps to attend a college that has a medical school for clinical exposure purposes. And number three, they look at volunteer experiences, and this, this can be volunteer experiences related to medicine or, or the clinical setting or outside the clinical setting. And so, um, you know, it's kind of neutral in terms of volunteer experiences uh, between attending, say, a smaller arts college versus a large research university. Let's talk about pre-med at small liberal arts colleges. So number one, small liberal arts colleges tend to lack in-depth research opportunities in medicine or the sciences. There are some exceptions, but because they don't have large research programs and they don't have any medical schools affiliated with them, it's often more challenging for students to get involved with research. Number two, it's more difficult to get cl cl clinical exposure, and that's simply because of the fact that small liberal arts colleges are not affiliated with medical schools. Um, and number three, the, the one upside of going to a small arts, arts college if you want to be pre-med is it's easier to get recommendation letters if your classes are much smaller, which they are at small liberal arts colleges. So at Solomon Admissions Consulting, we provide comprehensive one-on-one -on -one college admissions consulting for students applying to college. Um, we, and this is done by former admissions officers at the top 25 schools. We also provide comprehensive combined seven to eight year BSMD medical program consulting, and this is for students applying to Brown's program in liberal medical education, Northwestern's honors program in medical education, Rice Baylor, and other seven or eight year BSMD combined programs. We help you out with a personal statement. This includes topic and essay, uh, topic and outline suggestions by former admissions officers. We help you out with strategic position consulting, which is advising on how to stand out from the rest of the class, also done by former admissions officers. We help you out with supplemental essays. Uh, that, that's also done by former admissions officers. And the editing of our essays that is actually done by Ivy League graduates who are professional writers. We give you insider information on college preferences. Different colleges look for different things. Uh, we provide graduate school advising. And this is advice from former medical school admissions officers for those of you who are pre-med and who want to pick the best college possible to in order to increase your chances for getting into med school. We help you shore up your weaknesses. We help you with recommendation letters. We uh, work with students who are ninth graders, 10th graders, and 11th graders on extracurricular activity consulting because the top schools look for specialists and not students who are well-rounded. So you have to really figure out what it is you're going to specialize in that, that is going to make you stand out from the crowd. We help you out with mock interview coaching, and we advise you on financial aid issues. Here are the 2014 average acceptance rates at top universities. So the third column is the average acceptance rate in 2014 last year, and the fourth column is the Solomon admissions acceptance rate. We typically get students into the top schools at any, anywhere from triple to quadruple the average acceptance rate. So for instance, last year, the acceptance rate at Duke University was 10.7%, 34.3% of the students we work with got into Duke. The acceptance rate at Harvard was 5.9%, 18.2% of the students we work with got into Harvard. The acceptance rate last year at Stanford was 5.1%. 23.1% of the students we work with got into Stanford, and the acceptance rate at Yale last year was 6.3%. 23.5% of the students we work with got into Yale. If you have any other further questions, you can uh, either call us uh, at 646-470-1096, or you can email us. Uh, you can reach me by email at dan.lee at solomonadmissions.com or you can reach Vitali at vitali.borshan at solomonadmissions.com.